Today I'd like to discuss the LIGHTS Divert Inverted Microscope. The Divert is set up to do live cell studies and it's an excellent choice for educational purposes because it'll do things that uh, optically you can't do with upright microscopes. So here's the Divert with a trinocular tube and attached is a uh, modern HDMI a high resolution, high definition color camera and a LED light source there on the right. The uh, LED is useful because when you're working with live material uh, you don't want to kill it with heat of a lamp so uh, there's pretty much uh, a little ambient increase in the uh, lighting on the cells as you're studying things like pond water or fresh tissue. So here's the divert set up and uh, we're looking now at a flower cross section, a typical teaching slide that you see here on the screen. And I'm going to zoom in a bit and then we're going to talk about some of these accessories for the divert that uh, make it even more useful for live cell studies. So here you see a teaching slide. Uh, in real time and this is good for studying uh, slides that were prepared and stained dead of course uh, to get the whole concept going for uh, cell structure and uh, you know allow kids to look at things like uh, uh, mitosis going on in cell activities the uh, Next slide I'm going to put on is a teaching slide, also reference slide, that uh, is bright field. We're using a 10x objective. Uh, this is a, what's called a Strew slide and uh, it works pretty good in bright field. You can stop down the aperture diaphragm a bit to get a little more contrast. But what you can also do is quickly insert a phase annuli and that can be placed in and then you can turn the lamp up and now you see structures on these cells in real time with a lot more contrast and Mr. Zernike won a Nobel Prize for his development and here we do long working distance we uh, long working distance phase contrast but we can quickly go to high magnifications, changing focus on the on the fly. This is the 20x objective. Notice I didn't have to change the phase rings. Let's go to a uh, larger structure. Should be able to see that there on the right. Beautiful little structures, and then we can go to a 32x objective that really would be difficult to replicate on an upright phase contrast microscope. So, here the divert. Uh, starts showing some capabilities that uh, really make it interesting, especially for things like, uh, for example, pond water. If we have a slide with uh, a chamber, this is a little chamber we make here at Bunton. Uh, it's a 50 millimeter dish, but the bottom of the dish is a interchangeable cover glass, so we can. We can swap out, uh, as we change experiments, uh, one inch cover slips in the bottom of this little chamber. And now we have a nice flat bottom. So the moment we start looking at uh, small, really small structures in phase contrast, we start seeing some things that, if we're lucky, we'll catch some guys swimming around here. Let's change focus a bit. Always looking for movement. This is 
just a fresh sample of pond water that I took here this morning. And children for, and students, for example, can, you know, spend hours with this thing just looking to see what they've collected in the pond water. Uh, today, these days, uh, they may even be looking for microplastics uh, in the local streams or ponds. And we've got some movement going on there. I'm not sure what that guy is. Something's kicking up the dust, but that is all subject to exploration. Uh, they also make uh, three by one micro slides with little individual wells and a flat bottom. Here I've got some of the same pond water sample. Uh, in this chamber, I'm seeing a lot of little guys swimming by here. We can go to a lower power. Let's go to the 20x. So again, phase contrast allows us to see uh, detail and contrast in unstained, fresh, living material. And of course, the optics are down below here, so uh, whatever we can fit in between this 60 millimeter uh, distance, such as petri dishes, uh, small flasks, or chambers of your own design, uh, that can easily be added, and, and here you'll see a lot of little, little swimmers moving around here in the uh, in the sample dish here. So that's what phase contrast is all about. Another interesting accessory for the uh, divert is the ability to look at uh, mineral sections, synthetic fibers, anything that's what is called birefringent or, or uh, uh, illuminating uh, in polarized light to allow identification of certain minerals. Here it is in just phase contrast. We can look at mineral sections and fibers in phase. Uh, this is a method they might use looking at trace evidence in a crime lab, a forensic crime laboratory. But let's remove the phase ring at this point and look at it just in bright field. This is a thin mineral section. And here we're going to add uh, polarized light accessories. The first component goes right behind the objectives and that is called the analyzer. And aside from, uh, let's put it the other way around. Aside from darkening the light because it's a polarizing film, uh, it's still bright field. <clears throat> now the way we get cross polarization is to add what is called the polarizer. And we have a nice little convenient set of filter slots here to add three filters. And now we start seeing some things going on. And when we see that background going black, that's called going to extinction. We're crossing the polarizers. I think you can see that in the sample there. And again, we're using the same optics that we were using to uh, look at things like diatoms and critters in pond water. The other component that you can insert between the polarizer and the analyzer is a first order red compensator. And now everything that was black background before becomes a beautiful magenta. And we can cross and uncross that. And of course, geologists, professionals, can use these methods to uh, check out the birefringence uh, color properties of mineral samples and make identifications just by the color of the mineral when it's in cross polars with a first order red compensator. So these are all accessories that can be uh, provided for 
using the light's divert microscope. Bright field, even dark field. So if we want to look at this in dark field, we can remove all of the polarizing components. Polarizer, first order red. The analyzer is in a click stop slot, so we can just pull that out of the way. And now if we wanted to look at this in uh, dark field, say at low magnification, we can bring back our phase stop, put it in the slot up top here, mark FACO, open the aperture diaphragm, turn up the light a bit, and here we have a very nice low power dark field of this mineral sample. And that can also be useful for things like uh, our flower slide, thin section of the flower. Low power dark field adds a whole new contrast and detail enhancement for certain samples. As you can see, so there's all kinds of tricks we can do with the phase ring that we normally would use for phase contrast and that includes creating dark field using low mag objectives. In this case we're using a 4x low power objective. So uh, I thank you for listening to the inner workings of the lights divert. Uh, these are still available. We still service them here at Bunton and uh, these are the microscopes that led the way to just about all modern inverted microscopes uh, uh, that we see today. This instrument came out in the early 1970s. Lights divert, multi-purpose teaching microscope, uh, still available from Bunton Instrument. Thanks for your attention.